What's up everyone, it's OJH and we are back at it again and in this one we're going to take Murkai through a level 25 Deadmines dungeon. Let's get straight into it then. So here's the deck, as you'll see we are average level 22.3, this is going to be a level 25, so there is almost a 3 level difference there, so we're not going to dominate this dungeon run, but it's good enough and we get through it and it's not too bad at all. So average cost of 3.3, uh, the deck itself, Murkai is the leader. Great, uh, great card, and with the talent that extends uh, by five seconds that deployment of the Murlocs. We've got Quillbore in there with the tunnel vision for the faster deployment. Quillbore, really, really versatile card, can be used in all sorts of situations. We've got the chickens in there. Uh, chickens in this, really good because you come up against a lot of single target enemy minis, and chickens can get really, really good value for only two gold. Footman is your main tanky unit. Just love Footman, really, really good. Blizzard, Blizzard is a really, really good card for that immediate boss damage, take out big packs. I've seen some people use Living Bomb, my Living Bomb is about level 16, so absolutely not good enough for this. So I'm using Blizzard, I like Blizzard, I think it's a really, really good card. Well pegs are in there with a Flame Burst talent, again, amazing card, drop them on the boss and uh, drop them in front of Stealth Units, expose the Stealth Units, Flame Burst will take them out, really good card. And Pyromancer with the Pyroblast talent as your main damage dealer. There we go, so let's get straight into this run then. <clears throat> so like I say, 22.3 and uh, going in 25. So we've got, after deploying your leader, next beast mini play costs one less gold. Towers, barracks, meeting stones spawn a well peg every 15 seconds or every third gold mine levels up your active minis. Not a big fan of the last one. We're going to go with uh, play leader and the next beast is one less gold. No less than one gold. Um, makes your deck cycle uh, cheaper in certain situations. I like that. So my tactic for this one is I try and stick to the middle lane and the right lane, but I hold off at the start, see what is going to come my way because there's normally a push which comes from one side or the other. So I've started out with old Murkai in the back. Um, and that's so that I can get the extra Murlocs spawning from everything else that I'm playing. So to start with, we're going to get a little bit of defence going on. I do find in this one that um, that the enemy has got loads of gold all the time. I don't know. I don't know if I need to do more mining during this, or I find they've just got gold constantly. Anyway. So we've got the Tauren coming down the pipe, but we've got loads of things that deal with the Tauren. You don't just have to use your well pegs on the Tauren. We're going to split Footman here. Uh, Paramounts is possibly going to come down to get some um, damage, maybe. We're going to hold off. I think No, I think we're doing all right here. So we're going to play Murkai again. Then we're going to play Paramounts. It spawns some of the Murlocs. Then we're going to play Chickens because uh, the Mountaineer and the Bear are both single target. So we get loads of Murlocs spawning. And that's, uh, that's good. That's good enough for us. Well, Peg's coming down there with the Flame Burst. That gets rid of that Invisible um, invisible Dark Spear Troll over on the left. We played a Quillbot in the back just for a little bit of distraction while we had Murkai there that was got, getting a few shots in. So we've taken the damage lead-ish. Maybe? Maybe not. Anyway... So, we're going to let that Prowler connect because, again, we want to play Murkai, and then we want to play the Chickens, and then we're going to play the Paramancer so we can get all those extra um, extra Murlocs spawning. So, we did take a little bit of damage, um, but it's but for me, it's uh, it's worth it. Wellpeg's coming in there, Flame Burst Talent cleaning up all of that. Just didn't quite get the Mountaineer down, um, but... Still, that's uh, that's okay. That's all right. Uh, so we're about two minutes in, minute and a half to go, and we're doing okay. We've kind of weathered the storm a little bit, I think, here. So we're, we're, in, a, we're in a decent position. So Murkai's come down again. Footman coming down after that. Same tactic. We'll get these Murlocs spawning. Paramounts are coming in. Another three Murlocs coming in there. Chicken's coming down. And then we are going to want to try and distract. We want to keep Alder Murkai alive and we fail miserably. Murkai going down there, that's just poor, poor play on my part. Uh, there was no need to lose uh, Old Murkai at that point, but we did. So, we've got a bit of a push going on on the right hand side. That's good that we've got the footmen and we've got the uh, Paramounts are being protected there. Might be able to get something going here. We've got a couple of Murlocs coming uh, down the central lane. Not worried about them at all, really. I know we've taken some damage, but I'm really not concerned. Keeping an eye on the Tauren that's coming across the bridge. 
Um, but we've got a decent sized push happening on the right hand side. I think we had about seven footmen um, and the Paramount sir. Murkai's come down again. More chickens come down. Get some extra Murlocs spawning. Really want to play McQuill Ball, but that Mountain here got played, so we're going to have to hold off there. Then the Tormund got played, so we're going to Well Pegs instead. Get them spawned, get the Flame Burst for some added damage. Now we're going to uh, Quill Ball for distraction. Well Pegs were doing their thing, which was good. We've got Mur uh, Murkai chipping away on the right hand side, and with five seconds to go, we are in a pretty good spot. We're going to Blizzard all of that because we're just going to. I mean, we need to concentrate on defending, clearly, but. We've got good direct damage sources, uh, be that the well pegs, be that the blizzard or the quill ball. So we need to do a little bit of defending first. That's absolutely fine. We'll try and take out this mountaineer with the well pegs. Uh, again, this is what I was saying before. All of a sudden, we've got all sorts coming our way. We've got mountaineer, we've got prowler, we've got dark spit troll, we've got spiderlings. Uh, we've got the tauren coming across the bridge. We've got another mountaineer that's been played on the right. Oh, dearie me. Right, so at some point in a minute, uh, we are going to just have to go for it here because we have only got 20 seconds left um, and we can't just keep defending. So Wellpeg's going in, Quillball going in to distract, tiny bit of health left, Blizzard to finish, that is that. So all in all, I find this one to be one of, if not the hardest boss in the, uh, in the whole dungeon. <clears throat> so pretty pleased with that all in all. Um, right, second lot of relics, what we got? Flying minis gain poison. Well, we've only got the well pegs, so probably not. Squads summon one additional mini from another random squad. Free mini on the map, nice. Uh, your range minis deal increasing damage with each attack uh, resets when they move. No. So we're going to take the extra squad mini. And uh, we'll see how that works out. So on this one, I've left, in fact, I've left that screen in there just to show you that my game crashes as well as probably yours. So on this one, what I'm trying to do normally is stick to the left and the middle lane. I don't really worry about going right. The only thing I go right for is because there is gold there that we can get hold of. Other than that, we're going to go left. We're going to put in a big old push left. So we've got a bear that spawned. That's nice. So we've got a bear that spawned with the footman. We're going to use the flame burst. Uh, from the well pegs, we're going to use the blizzard, and we're going to do a decent job-ish of uh, cleaning some of that up. Quillball coming in in the back right corner of that siege tower to act as distraction. Quillball does go down, but that's fine because it's bought us a little bit of time, so we've still got four footmen alive. Call that three footmen alive, two murlocs, so that tower's ours. So we're 45 seconds in, and we've already got that left tower. Good. And we can now go and get the other gold chest and have a push round to the right. So most of the pushes, as you'll notice, are going to start with wait until we've got enough to drop Murkai in the back, then drop Footman, so we get loads of extra Murloc spawning. Good, that's that's what we're doing. Going to use the same tactic again to take this one out. So we're going to drop the well pegs, get the flame burst going, and then blizzard it all. And this neck, uh, the set that comes down the right hand side there, are largely ground. Um, Ground attacking ones, there's not normally things like a Huntress in there. So, as you can see, both those Prowlers have got very, very little health. Uh, level 26 is, we're just gonna, we're just gonna soak that damage. We can't defend everything, not getting involved in that. So, Huntresses in this can be a bit of a nightmare, in fairness. So we've got the left tower and we've got the middle tower. So we're in a pretty good spot. And as you can see, I'm saving up again to get Murkai down in the back. And then it'll be uh, some footmen up high, loads of those uh, murlocs spawning. You do get mur murlocs that spawn if you drop your uh, kobold as well, not getting an extra one. So that's nice. Another murkai coming in, <clears throat> and we've got a pretty big push coming in on the left. To be honest, because I've got such a big push going in the middle myself, I, I don't mind losing that left tower at this point because we can drop the well pegs on there with the flame burst, they'll take out most of that. Then we've just got the two ground units left, the Null Brew and the Tauren, and we can, we can deal with that with just chickens, so that'll be a, a straightforward defence. So we're still dropping our troops at the front there, we want to uh, have them going around to the right this time. Chicken's coming down, drop your chickens too late. After being, after being all confident that we have that in hand, drop your chickens too late. Anyway... Um, so we're taking a bit of damage there, but that's fine. We're going to get the four gold from both the chests here, and then we want to push round to the left this time. So we'll let that push come down the right. Um, same tactic again. Well pegs, flame burst, blizzard. Thank you very much. 
Oh, Mirka, coming in on the left there. I'm going to play my uh, Quill Ball behind uh, for some distraction. Chickens are going mad. Chickens being the MVP in this one. Um, and it's all going on. I don't know if we're going to take it on this one. So we've got such little health now that, again, I was talking before, we've got loads of direct damage in this deck. So that is what we're going to do. We've got the Flame Burst coming in. We've got the Quill Ball coming in. That's fine. That's fine. I think that's pretty, uh, I think that's pretty good. That's pretty straightforward. Happy with that. Happy, happy, happy. So, third and final boss, where it can all go wrong very, very quickly. Anyway, the third lot of relics that we get, we've got a great one so far. The uh, third lot of relics, uh, Minnie's torn on the, uh, I'm firing through these, right, let's go back to the start, hold on, hold on. Minnie's torn on deploy, well if you've got your damage dealers taunting, that, that ain't, that's not going to work. Uh, deploying an unbound mini stuns enemies for one second. Spells leave behind a mana crystal granting resist. Well, we've only got Blizzard. So I don't think that's going to do uh, too much for us. A one second stun. Right. Brilliant. So that's as good as that's getting then. So um, let's see how this goes then. So the good thing about Murkai on this one is the clone machine, which uh, can can make things go wrong quickly if the wrong thing gets cloned. Because you're going to have loads of Murlocs on the map here. That the chances are you're going to clone a Murloc. That's all right, don't mind that. Right, Wellpegs came in to uh, unveil the sneaky bandits that were in there. We've got a uh, mountaineer who spawned this time with the uh, with our with our squad mini, the footman. Uh, so we're going to blizzard all of that, try and get rid of that uh, troll at the back. We've got two footmen. We've got the uh, mountaineer. Are we going to have enough to take that tower? I do hope so. Yes, a kobold got cloned. That's that's like ideal. That's like the, that's the dream to have a kobold get in mind, uh, mind cloned. So I played me well pegs there to try and uh, kill this molten giant, and then immediately an ogre mage went down. That's not good, and I've sacrificed here my um, quill ball. That is not the ideal play, but I'd rather have my quill ball cloned than a molten giant because you get them coming down, you're in serious trouble and because we've got a bit of bridge control all of those uh, quill balls that came out of the machine have pretty much been killed before they even got to our tower so that's okay so we're going to defend on the right we're going to let this mage lock on and then we're going to play chickens on the molten giant and like i say molten giant might be big might be strong loads health he is a single target mini therefore um chickens do a great job uh, what we got then, so that was the well pegs that came down on the Ogre Mage. Um, and they've taken taken the Ogre Mage down to, uh, I don't know, quarter health or something like that. And again, we're just going to, we're going to eat this damage because as you can see, I'm saving up my Murkai because we're going to go for a big push down the right hand side. As I was saying before, because we've got loads of like squad minis, now we've cloned chickens. Uh, cloning chickens is absolutely fine. No problem with cloning chickens at all. You don't want to clone too many bat riders, if I'm honest with you, but um, but they're all getting seen to before they spawn anyway, so that's uh, that's good. And then we've got a massive push going for this right tower. Happy with that. Don't forget to get the uh, the chest that's next to your base. Um, make things easy for yourself. Um, and then we are going to stage most of our attack from that right-hand siege tower that we've just taken. Quill bore in there to turn that mage around because we really don't want to lose that push over them footmen. Dodgy times now with that molten giant stood on the uh, on the clone pad. Get him off there, please. Good. And we've got a right old push going on here, haven't we? So we've got 50 seconds left. We've cloned what's been cloned there. Bandit. Not worried about that. Murkai coming in. Paramounts are coming in. Got ourselves a load more uh, uh, Murloc spawning. Quillball going in behind to, uh, to tank, to distract. Chipping away, chipping away. Chicken's making an appearance. Murkai doing it in his business. Paramounts are doing her thing. Job done. That's how we do that. It's so like I say, not necessarily easy, but the deck definitely, definitely works. And I think it's really, really strong uh, for a lot of situations in this. So please, if you have a go with this deck, let me know how you get on in the comments. If you do find this useful, then please give the video a thumbs up. For more content like this, get yourself subscribed. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.